okay windows it is so while we are all waiting for the new windows 10 update which is gonna be huge let's quickly see some fresh new windows apps for 2021 and like always we are not gonna talk about the popular ones like flux file converter everything etc you know it i know it rather let's talk about some little known apps but before we get to that we upload tech videos thrice a week and if you want to stay wiser make sure you subscribe to tech wiser and hit the bell icon as well let's go now we all use all-in-one messenger app like you have apps like whatsapp slack or microsoft teams depending on your college trello or notion now the problem with all-in-one messenger app is there were two good options franz or station both of them are paid now so here's an alternative called stack browser in comparison stack browser is even better than franz and station so first of all it's free i mean completely free with no nudging or app limit and you can add as many apps you want i currently use it with notion trello slack and whatsapp web i've been using this for two months almost and have never faced any software crashes or non-responsiveness which blows my mind off there's also this feature where you can club apps and scroll horizontally to switch between apps but i find it weird and interferes with the normal scrolling gesture so i've disabled it i just do it with the padlock button next up we have dimmer now dimmer is a similar app to flux like you know the night mode on your smartphone but dimmer supports multiple monitors and more importantly it lets you adjust the brightness of both the monitors separately in flux you cannot set custom brightness of monitors separately dimmer lets you do that i frequently use it while i'm working on my laptop and the monitor at night i can dim the screen of the monitor right from my laptop and that's really useful if you work late at night plus dimmer is a portable app so you don't have to install it on your system just keep it on a usb drive double click on it and use it instantly on a side note if you have a monitor that supports ddc or ci use win 10 slider i'll leave links to all of them in the description below so the next app is surfshark vpn the only reason to recommend Surfshark VPN is because it's the cheapest and it lets you access games without any speed throttling and blocked content on Netflix. Additionally, there are two specific reasons to recommend Surfshark. First, free VPNs are often caught selling user data. Moreover, free VPN don't give you much choice while selecting a server and has speed limitations. Surfshark is new in the industry and it costs almost half of Express and NordVPN and yet it offers the same features and efficiency. I use it all the time while browsing the web and yes, it also works on Netflix US or pretty much any streaming service where many paid VPNs don't work, let alone the free ones. Second reason to recommend Surfshark is the unlimited device support. So we have single Surfshark plan at TechWiser and it's shared between all the Team TW members in the PC, phone and even Android TV and Fire Stick. On the other hand, the other services like NordVPN and ExpressVPN only support max 5 devices in single license. Next up is YouTube 4K Downloader and oh, you're supporting piracy. Well, hold on. Our great YouTube doesn't let you download your own videos in 4K. It's 720p max. You can use Google Takeout, which lets you download your Google Drive files, Google Photos and YouTube videos all in one, but it's complex. So you can use YouTube 4K Downloader, which is free and lets you download your own videos in 4K with audio. So you can install the 4K Download app. Now all you need is the YouTube video URL, paste it in the app, select the resolution, which is maximum 4K, click on the download button and that's it, you're done. And obviously, you can download other people's videos as well, but let's just pretend I didn't say that. Next up, we have Smash. It is one of my favorite. It lets you send unlimited files with unlimited file size to any system without sign up. Google Drive gives you 15 GB. Smash gives you unlimited file size. Here, let me show you. I open the Smash web page on my Windows PC. 
This is a 800 MB file. I just uploaded it. Here's the link. I open the link on my Android device and download. Boom, it just takes one minute, 20 seconds. It works on mobile data remotely. So you can even send files to your friends in some other city. Plus, if you use Slack, it integrates with Slack and will automatically send a link whenever the file is done uploading. The only problem with Smash is if your file size is 2 plus GB, you have to wait 3 hours to download it. They do keep your file for 14 days, but if your file size is more than 15 GB, use Smash. If it's 3 to 4 GB, use Google Drive instead. Finally, we heard you. Both me and Rinal have started using Notion. In case you don't know, Notion is an all-in-one app. So Trello, To-Do, Sticky Notes, everything inside one app that is Notion. But here is how I use Notion. So suppose say first of the month, I have to do n number of stuff like paying rent, EMI, broadband data recharge, SIPs, electricity bill, etc. Now I can do this in any note taking app, but in Notion, I can go one step ahead. Not only I can create a checkbox, but also set a recurring reminder. Similarly, I have to also track a lot of product launches and order them on sale. So I can create a new Notion board of calendar events and mark all the launch events like Realme Buds Air 2, Samsung F62, etc, etc. You know the names. My point here is, as you can see, the first and second example are entirely different, yet they work quite well with Notion. Similarly, the unique selling point of Notion is its all-in-one note-taking approach. No matter what your requirements are, Notion can do it. It supports media, Excel, calendar, list, photo, absolutely everything. And of course, if you don't want to start from scratch, you have templates. Overall, Notion is among those software that yield great returns the longer you use it. I highly recommend Notion to everyone watching and, and thank you Team TW for recommending it during SNL. Subtle plug, Saturday 9 p.m. Okay, this is a wildcard entry. Recently, LastPass moved to a paid model. In case you don't know, LastPass is a password manager and in case you don't use a password manager, come on, be wiser, give your brains a rest. <laughs> Anyways, LastPass now lets you use it either on mobile or on desktop. Now, a good alternative to LastPass is Bitwarden. Bitwarden, first of all, is an open source app, so it's gonna be free for a long time. It uses the same encryption as LastPass, it also provides features like prompting for a secure password, just like LastPass. Plus, it's very easy to export your passwords from Chrome or LastPass and then import it back to Bitwarden. Bitwarden has apps for different platforms like Android, iOS, and the web app for Windows and Mac. The only problem I found with Bitwarden is that if you forget your master password, you'll have to reset your account and you'll lose all your data. But that's a security feature as well. To end all of these, here's a quick utility called Microsoft Power Tools. I've been using Microsoft Power Tools for multiple reasons, but here's two of my favorite, which are also a recent addition. Recently, it has got a video conference mute option. So basically, it can mute your mic and stop your camera. So if you press Windows Shift O, it will block your camera and Windows Shift A to block your mic. So no matter what app you're using, it will shut the camera and microphone. It's really a lifesaver at time. Next, I use Color Picker, which is extremely useful if you use Photoshop, and it will give you a color picker. Like suppose on the web, I'm just browsing and I like a color, you hit Windows Shift C and the color picker pops up, just tap on the color and you have the hex code. You can use the hex code in Photoshop or even if you make website, use it in CSS, it's a handy tool. Additionally, you also have batch image resizer, batch file rename, shortcuts modifier, etc. Lots of stuff. Use it and do let me know your feedback. And on that note, this was the list. I'm eagerly waiting for the Windows 10 update. Do let me know your opinion on it. And also let me know if I missed out on some app or which one's your favorite. And this is Pradeek signing off. See you soon.